Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing really well. Today's video is a quick and hopefully a very useful video. It's all about lesson planning and what do you do in those situations where you're really pressed for time but you have to get a lesson plan together and you have to make sure you've got lesson resources as well. So these are some of my suggestions and some of my best pieces of advice and wisdom. I have made a video in the past talking about uh, the backbone structure of a really good lesson plan and I'll link that up in the cards above. But today's video is a little bit more about the hacks. What do you do when you are pressed for time? So without further ado, let's get into the video. My number one piece of advice is to make sure that you're using already made resources. So this can be something that you access online from Tez or from a teacher blogger or a Twitter account. I think that there are just so many amazing online resources that have been shared and you know tried and tested and you don't have to plan any of that from scratch. All you need to do is a quick search and then find the resource that is best for you. Now the danger with this is that you're going to spend hours finding lots of resources. So have a few accounts that you follow and that you know are your go-to places. And then once you've narrowed all of those down, when you're pressed for time, go back to those places and then see if they've got something for you. On the snow of using resources that have already been made, make sure that you're storing, filing and organising them appropriately because when you're pressed for time, that is what is going to make the difference. Make it a best practice for you to categorise and organise all of these resources in a way that is meaningful to you so that you can easily access them when you need it. My second tip is to make sure that you're using templates. So all of us have a preferred style of how we like to make our lesson resources. A lot of teachers use pre-made PowerPoint or Google Slides um, and they all already have a specific format. You want to avoid you know, making that formatted version every single time you're planning a lesson. So have a pro forma, have a template saved onto your desktop that every time you need to plan a lesson or copy paste a few slides from a different resource into your own formatted PowerPoint or Google slide that you've got that pro forma ready to hand. And that is going to save you so many precious minutes in terms of formatting the font, choosing the colors, you know, including different shape and text boxes and different, um, you know, instructions for activities. So make sure that every time you have to plan something, you add to that pro forma, the template slide, uh, everything already formatted. So then when you need to put a lesson together, you can just quickly open that, copy paste, save as, and that should resolve your problem. My third tip is one that I use all the time. It is one called Parkinson's Law. And essentially this is a productivity hack. It is talking about how the task that you have to do is going to fill the time that you assign it. So if you've got something to do and you're going to spend, you know, two hours doing that because you have given two hours to do it, then that task will take two hours to do. So make sure you're using timers and that you're being very diligent with the time that you have to spend on a specific task. So in this situation, when you're lesson planning, don't just sit there and think, I've got to lesson plan now for the afternoon. Actually give yourself a deadline. Put your timer on the phone and switch your phone onto airplane mode and give yourself 15, 20 minutes just to bash out a lesson. And then once that time is up, you can then tweak and improve it. Uh, but I find that the lesson is, is planned within 10, 15 minutes every time I do that strategy. But when you're pressed for time, when you have to lesson plan, I think that keeping in mind this Parkinson's law is so useful because if I have to, you know, the night before, we've all been there where we've got a full day of lessons ahead of us and we haven't prepared any of them and you're just sat there thinking, how am I going to be planning six lessons and it's already the evening and I still have all these other things to do. I find that if you have an hour and you're, you've got six lessons to plan, you will plan six lessons in an hour. They won't be the most amazing lessons, but you will get the job done. So really push yourself, kick that adrenaline in um, and your lesson plans will all be made. My fourth tip is all to do with having a bank of activities that are a go-to resource. So for example, if you are trying to plan a lesson and you realize that a certain type of activity is best suited for it or you're stuck a little bit creatively and you don't really know what type of task the student should be doing for that lesson, 
have a pro forma, you know, maybe that template that I was talking about in tip number two, where you can then just look at all the different type of instructions for tasks, the different layouts of those tasks or, you know, things that students can do, whether that's in the lesson or as homework. And then you can just keep using those and you can select the one that is best suited for that lesson and also for that class. Some of my favorite are to tell the story, which is essentially a grid with all of the keywords from the lesson. And I ask my students to tell the story. Minimal prep, because sometimes I can just make it up on the spot in the lesson. I don't even need to make up a slide. I can get students to tell me the keywords. And then it's already scaffolded because students can either write sentences with a few keywords, they can write an entire paragraph, they can make a cartoon strip from this, they can make a storyboard, they can write an infographic or a diagram or I mean the options are endless. So I really like this, um, you know, really vague task, but it just has so many flexible options and it requires minimal prep, but is highly, highly effective. Another go-to is something called graffiti talk. That is when you give students a blank piece of paper and you can either assign them to do this individually in pairs in small groups. You can also employ this envoy technique, which essentially means that a person in each group moves on to another group after a certain amount of time. And on their blank piece of paper, they are answering a question or they are summarizing the lesson content or the topic or the subtopic or whatever it is. And again, minimal prep. You don't really need to print anything, to think about anything beforehand. All you need is blank pieces of paper. Um, and you can just give them the instructions on the spot in the lesson. So it doesn't require any additional prep time. Uh, but again, it's really, really student led. It's very effective. It's really, really engaging for students. Um, and also it gives you such valuable feedback for you to then plan better lessons in the future. And while we're at it, I'll give you a few more tips. One of my other favorites is when students make their own quizzes. So I love it when students are writing questions or are writing true or false statements and then they have that resource that they've made in their exercise books. And if I want to push it a bit you know, further, I get my students to swap their books with another uh, peer and then they get to either answer the true or false or answer those quiz questions. And it just gives them an opportunity again to engage with the students in the classroom. And it's just so much more student led and it provides such great feedback as well for me and for them. And lastly, a go-to if I'm in a pinch for time and I can't really spend lots of time planning a lesson, I grab my visualizer, I grab some exam questions or practice uh, questions in a worksheet format. And then all I do is in the lesson, I put my visualizer over the questions. I get the students to see the question up on the board and then we have a go all together answering that question. And then I put the next question below. Everyone can see that on the power, on the uh, board. And then they have a go at answering that in their books. Then I grab someone's book, put it under the visualizer. We go through the feedback again, give it back. And then we try the other questions after. It's just such an easy lesson and it's so, so purposeful. But again, you know, it doesn't have to be an entire lesson. That can be a 15 minute or 20 minute section of a lesson but it is very, very quick to prep. My last tip, so tip number five, is to actually consider not using a worksheet or you know a task that has to be printed on paper for students to use. We are all trying to be a lot more eco-friendly these days. And I, I mean, certainly as a teacher, I do rely a lot on paper and I think it's just so powerful for students to work on paper and put that paper into their exercise books. It helps them with revision. It helps them to complete tasks better. But sometimes when you're really stuck for time, it is time consuming because you need to format the worksheets. You need to make sure that they have been proofread if you're using a resource that has been shared online. You need to make sure that you've got the answers, you've had a go at doing them, and all of that can be really time consuming. So what I prefer to do is just pick out a few questions, actually think about how long each question is going to take students to answer. So for example, if that's one minute, a few seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, and then realistically think, well, how many questions do they need to answer in that one lesson? Really, it typically tends to be about five questions and at best maybe eight questions. So then that narrows down how many questions they need to answer in the lesson. 
I avoid printing the worksheet and I actually put it up on the slide, up on the board for students to see or even using my visualizer like I just mentioned before. So I think that can save you some precious time in walking to a printer, sorting out the printer, you know, if there have been issues with the printer that day in terms of stocking the paper or the ink or the toner, we've all been there. Um, and for you as well, it just means you don't need to be handing things out in the lesson um, and it just makes things a lot, lot quicker. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be exam style questions or practice based questions or worksheet questions. It could be something that is a little bit more abstract. It could be something like a summarizing task. So getting students to summarize the information in a specific format, whether that's a diagram or a cartoon strip, you know, or a storyboard or to do it in X number of words. I mean, you know, you can think creatively about this. I think that's part of the prep work so that when you are, you know, stuck for time and you need to get a lesson plan ready, in a really short amount of time you can do it because you've got this bank of resources ready for you to use okay and that is it those are my five quick tips of how to lesson plan in a pinch when you're really stuck for time i hope you found them really useful i'd be curious to know if you've got any other tips so leave them down below in the comment section and i will see you really soon take care guys bye